Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today I'm going to show you how to replace the SIM card reader from a single SIM to a dual SIM card reader on an iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is different on other models as they require some modifications which can be tedious but fun. If you'd like to see videos on those leave comments down below which models you'd like to see. That being said, let's get started. Alright, so let's start off this repair in a very simple way. Got the SIM tray here. I'm going to salvage a couple things like for example this sticker and then one on the side here and I'm going to flood also the area here to remove all of these little foam connector pieces. Otherwise when we go to heat up this SIM tray these will just shrivel and potentially make my job harder. Now we'll flip over the motherboard so we can access the back. And I'm going to try to get under all of the layers so that I can peel the sticker up in one go, just like that. Now you can see any way that there's solder on the back here that's coming through, any of these dots, those correspond to the SIM tray. We're going to want to m lower the melting point of the solder that's here from the, from the factory to help remove it. I'm going to add a bunch of flux on all of the little joints and I'm going to come in with some solder paste. This is a 138 so it's a low melt. Turn on the iron and I'm going to start to mix the solder here with the factory solder. And we'll just keep doing this until we've really flooded each one of those holes with the solder. A lot of the time when doing this it'll actually bring the the higher melting solder to the to the surface and it'll end up more on the iron. Now I'm going to come in with some wick and we're going to try to wick up as much of the solder as we can through each one of those holes and then cleaning it out as best we can leaving behind basically the pin that goes through the hole. And I'm going to do this all the way around focusing on the, the holes that maybe aren't letting go of the, the solder as easily as the other ones. Now I'm going to go back in with them low melt again and we're going to refill the holes before we desolder the, the sim tray. And it may not be necessary to wick them out if you're just going to be refilling it with the low melt. Maybe that's enough to bring the temperature down, but it's what's worked for me. All right, take some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, and we're just going to clean up any of the remaining flux paste. Now we've got a, a clean back of the board here. All right, what I've done is I've wrapped up the board nice and tight with some captain tape all the way around. Kind of leaving exposed anything that I need to solder from the back. But this will also help keep the board from potentially splitting when I heat it up. Alright, so I'm going to turn on my hot air. I've got mine set at 375. And I'm just going to warm up the whole area. And I'm just going to put the tweezers under the edge of the tray. giving it a little bit of tension upwards and then the sim tray will eventually let it go and come off like that. We'll let the board cool down a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to add some flux just like that. We'll grab our iron and our wick and we'll wick up all of the solder and we'll do this until all of the holes are clean of all of the solder so that we can much easier install the new sim tray reader. There's a couple holes that aren't letting me clear them. Most of them are nice and clear. You can see they're all nice and black there, but I'm going to flip over the board. This will really expose the holes that I still need to, to wick out. You can see these ones on the side here, they're good. These six are good. Five of the six are good there. We're almost through on the other ones. So we'll add some flux, take out our wick. If you're ever really struggling to get solder out of a hole, you can always take a little bit extra of the low melt solder paste and add it to the hole and then we'll wick it up really getting all right now that I have all of the holes cleaned out I'm gonna go ahead and thoroughly clean the motherboard with some isopropyl alcohol q-tip whatever you got we'll flip it over and clean the inside as well making sure that we get rid of all of the flux all right now it's time now that we've cleaned that to get out our new dual sim tray reader now it'll look very similar to this one if you can look here even though the plastic is melted on this one the bottom section that was touching the board is just those empty rectangles on the new one it's got the two layers so 
It's got that second row up top. This one just has the top row, and this one has two rows, one on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna do a couple things to prep for this new SIM tray. The grounding positions here around the perimeter, I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to them. That way I'm not having to really tin the, the board at all. And I'm gonna come in on each one of these little pads and we'll tin them up with solder. One more, this teeny one on the end here. Now I'm gonna encapsulate everything else in flux. So we've got all of the pins and I'm just gonna cover in flux and we'll add more flux to all of the grounding positions as well. But I'm not overdoing the flux, if that makes sense. All right, so here's how I'm gonna go about doing the next step. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a flat chisel blade and I'm gonna compress some solder down into, some solder paste I should say, down into the holes. And then I'm gonna wipe away the excess and I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing. You can almost see the solder paste already coming through on the other side. I shouldn't say almost, you can see the solder paste coming through on the other side. All right, and then I'm gonna wipe away the excess, just like that. And I'm gonna take the new SIM tray and I'm gonna line it up and compress it into those slots. And I'm gonna take some flux and I'm actually going to cover the outside edge of the plastic here. Flux I found actually acts as somewhat, somewhat of a shield for plastics, which is odd, but kind of cool at the same time. Because I'm gonna heat this from below. I'm gonna turn on my hot air, and very similar to how I would do kind of an HDMI swap or something, I'm gonna come in from below, and I'm gonna heat up the board just like that. I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just make sure all of the holes have flown real nice with the solder. And I'm gonna come in and reinforce all of the joints with a uh, high melt. All right, now that we've got that all on there, let's clean it on up for the last time. Looks like I singed the plastic a little bit right here, but I'm just gonna clean it up, make it look a little bit more presentable. I won't tell anyone if you don't. And we'll give this another final cleaning before we put the sticker on the back. If that's good enough for now. And then come into the front. We'll clean whatever we can see. You can see nice solid solder joints through and through on, on all of those. We'll peel back the captain tape. I'm going to come in with a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. Get rid of any residue. And we'll clean up the back, making it perfect for the sticker to go back on. And now you can see we've got the double sided SIM read, the dual SIM card reader installed. All right, we'll put back the liquid damage indicator, this piece here on the side, and the little foam stickers that go around the connectors. That way it's as if no one was here before. And last but not least, the sticker on the back. All right, and that is how to replace the SIM tray on an iPhone 13 Pro Max. That being said, make sure that you have a dual SIM card tray as well as the regular SIM card tray won't work. It'll only take one, this one takes two. You'll notice that on one side it has a little, almost like a compression spring that helps keep the SIM card from popping out when you stick it in there so that you can flip it upside down and put the other SIM in before sliding it into the phone. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.